Greetings, everyone. This is Jeff Wilkerson, professor of physics at Luther College, bringing you the next in our series of what to look for in the night sky. We're talking about the week of March 11th, 2024. My goodness, do we have a fun week for you this week. It's uh, every week. Every week is fun, and every week's more fun than the previous week. Let's say that. Let's make it our goal for 2024. We're just going to have more fun each week that we do this. Uh, so what we're going to talk about, let's start, look, we're looking at the evening sky, evening sky only this week. As it gets dark, uh, this is another one of those times, I, I've talked about this many times, this is another one of those times when you look uh, and see constellations that you think are out of season, right? So uh, we always talk about the Great Square of Pegasus being a marker of fall. Here we are, we're in March, uh, we're in spring, and it's, it's beautiful out there, spring's popping up all over the place, and in the evening sky just after sunset, there's the Great Square of Pegasus settling into the sunset. And so this, this marker, of, we see it rising into the sky in the fall sky uh, just after dark. And now just after dark, we see it settling into the west. And it reminds us uh, that we see a lot of the sky due to the rotation of the earth on any one given night. Uh, and so this is great. Uh, so we go out, we find the great square of Pegasus. Uh, on the upper left corner of the great square of Pegasus, we've talked about this before, you've got the V of Andromeda that looks like a cornucopia, this sort of V of stars. Uh, that, that stretches up. You count out two, the bottom row of the V. The bottom row of the V is the brighter stars, the fainter stars are along the top row of the V. Fainter stars, brighter stars. You count out uh, one, two on this chain and go from the bottom to the top in that same distance again and you get the Andromeda galaxy. Our nearest neighbor full-size galaxy, big beautiful galaxy. You got a good clear dark sky, you should be able to see it without any optical aid. You got a pair of binoculars, great. Uh, that's going to make it just that much easier. Again, start with the great square, count out two, and go up from the bottom to the top that distance. Again, you've got the big slash of the Andromeda galaxy. Harder to see is sort of the same distance. Count down and out the distance the other direction is M33, the pinwheel galaxy. And this galaxy, uh, we've talked about this before. I love this galaxy. This galaxy, um, I've seen it uh, while camping in the mountains. Uh, with, without any optical light, without my glasses on, so that I have, everything's kind of blurry. Um, <laughs> kind of is an understatement. Um, but anyway, everything's blurry, and you can see, I can see the glow of the, the pinwheel galaxy there is a fuzzy patch. So what I see are, are these fuzzy patches against the inky dark sky. I see Andromeda, I see M33, and then over here, I see the Pleiades star cluster as a fuzzy patch that way. So we've got this chain of three objects there. Now the Pleiades is a very, very good object to pick out without any optical aid. You'll see it and you'll see the individual stars if you've got your glasses on instead of like when I don't have my glasses on. Uh, so you'll see this grouping of this star cluster, the Pleiades, that's right here. And so this, these three things make a beautiful, beautiful array of objects. M30, M31, Andromeda, and M45, why don't we put that on there, the Messier number for the Pleiades as well. M45, the Pleiades, is, uh, those are easily, relatively speaking, you got good dark clear skies uh, without a lot of moisture. Those objects are the most likely that you'll be able to see with your naked eye. Use your averted vision, and I think you might be able to see this too, but binoculars will help. A, a telescope isn't great for this, or this. This is so big, it doesn't fit in a telescope field of view very well, and this is so faint. It's a, this is a galaxy that's turned up face on. We talked about galaxies a little bit last week. It's turned up face on, so you're looking through the thin part of the galaxy. You don't have as much integrated light along your line of sight, so it's the surface brightness, the contrast, is low with the, the sky background. It's hard to pull out. So these two things don't hold up very well to a telescope. This doesn't hold up very well to a telescope either because it's so big. The stars overfill the field of view unless you have a really good low-power eyepiece. So binoculars are the way to go. Binoculars, 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 or even no optical aid. Okay? All that's great, but that's not what we're here to talk about this week. What the heck are we going to talk about? If that's not it, what are we doing? Well, a couple of weeks ago, a viewer asked a question about Comet Pondsbrooks. And we looked at it and decided this is the week we want to talk about it. We could talk about it other times. So thank you for that question. I hope you're out there watching right now. And, and I really appreciate that. Uh, we're going to talk about Pons Brooks coming through this region of the sky this week. Again, the week of March 11th. Uh, and so this, the comet is getting brighter. We wanted to wait because the comet's getting brighter as spring works 
forward, but it's also getting a little bit harder to see. It's set getting closer to the sun. And as it gets closer to the sun, it's up during the daytime, right? And it's really a challenge to see. This week, Comet Pogsbrooks, if you want to look it up, is sliding past Delta Andromeda, the first star in the V. So you have the tip of the V down here, the vertex of the V, the first pair as you go up. The brighter star near the bottom uh, has epsilon just below it. Uh, that brighter star, Delta, Comet Podsbrooks is going to be sliding right across there this week. Right uh, about midweek, it's going to be, or toward the end of the week, it's going to be uh, directly above uh, Delta. It's going to start a little bit to the west of Delta and move a little bit to the east of Delta, and you can see it in there. It should be. Uh, comets are always a little bit unpredictable, and I'm always leery about uh, overhyping them. But it should be a pretty good object, pretty easy to pick out in binoculars. So you've got your binoculars out to look at these objects. You should be able to find a fuzzy object there right next to Delta Andromeda. And use this as your guide. Uh, this is Alpha Andromeda, the upper square. We call it the great square of Pegasus, but that star's in Andromeda, the vertex star right there. So, so use Alpha Andromeda and Delta Andromeda as your guide to look for Pons Brooks in that region. And, and it should be uh, any pair of binoculars you got. Uh, probably should be able to pull this object out and watch that this week. And it's this part of the sky is also fabulous right now because Jupiter's shining right there. You've got the bottom of the great square of Pegasus. Go over a couple of more of those, and you've got Jupiter down uh, just below there, uh, that line that extends. Biggest, brightest object in the region of the sky. So you, 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 it's beautiful. Find Jupiter right there. And then the moon is going to be just above Jupiter, really close, a beautiful, beautiful, this is the evening of the 13th. The evening of the 13th, the moon's less than 20% full, so it's a beautiful slender crescent moon paired up wonderfully with Jupiter right there. If you've got the ability to take pictures of the night sky, so many picture opportunities here, right? Because you get a nice wide-angle lens on your, tele, on, on, on your camera, and you've got, that wide, you've got this lens that can encompass this entire area. It doesn't have to be that wide an angle, right? Um, <clears throat> and it can encompass this area, I bet you can take a picture where you can see M31, M33, M31, M33, and Ponds Brooks all in one field of view. So give it a try uh, to see about doing that. But the, the, the Jupiter and the moon, uh, <clears throat> this slender crescent moon, this is great too. Now, one night later, the moon's still going to be a beautiful crescent. We're talking about the evening of the 14th, and it's going to be right up there next to the Pleiades. And so you've got Andromeda, Ponds Brooks, uh, the pinwheel galaxy, the Pleiades, and the moon. Right <laughs> there's a beautiful crescent moon. Oh my goodness! Just, 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 just call in sick to work, right? You just gotta, you just, you just gotta enjoy. I am if you work in the evenings for sure. This is this region right here. Let's let's get that straight. Uh, Delta Andromeda right here that we're using as the focal point for all of this action because that's where the comet's going to be sliding by, and our galaxies are just above there. Delta Andromeda sets about three hours after the sun. So wait an hour and a half after sunset or so, and the glow of the sky should be gone and dark, and this should still be pretty well placed above there. You don't have a lot of time at that point, so maybe wait an hour uh, after sunset. So go an hour after sunset, 50 minutes after sunset, to two hours after sunset, and you've got a good chance to really enjoy some of this observing. Now this stuff's going to be up uh, longer after that. Uh, two nights after the 14th to the 16th, we're out at the tip of uh, Taurus the Bull. We've looked at El Naf before. As a star, we like El Nap because objects of the solar system. It's right there in the in the plane of the the solar system. So objects slide past there. The moon will be 50 percent full. So by as we approach the end of this week, we're talking about the moon has filled out from nothing to about 50 percent full, and it's uh, right next to El Nap. It makes a beautiful pairing with El Nap. So we got that beautiful pairing with El Nap. Beautiful pairing with the Pleiades. Beautiful pairing with Jupiter, and you got a comet, and you've got galaxies. It's just, it's, it's, a, it's a great week, folks. Hopefully you have some clear skies and have a chance to get out there and, and enjoy it. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll have something new for you next week.